Alexander the Great and his Greeks conquered the world. The man took his armies east and kept going till the world stopped at the River Indus. Now can we, as Greece, do the same? Let's find out. We'll be playing as Greece, obviously, in 19. 36. Now, before I get into this, this video is based on the strategy worked out by Efficient Strategy Gaming. I'll leave a link to his original video down below. Go give the man some love. This is a really good strategy and he helped me overcome some issues. So let's get into it. Iron Man mode is on with historical focus is on. So let the suffering begin. All right. First things first. Focuses. I am going for the king's government through metaxism right down here towards recruit the fascists. That is the first order of business. Research will stick with the basics. I'm going to be prioritizing industry. Other than that, of course, the artillery branch, very important. Anti-air, very important. Infantry stuff, again, important. And I usually don't, but this time I will because I've seen what they can do. We will be going with CAS, but not yet. We'll start work on CAS later. I'll I'll clue you in when to start work. Construction, let's build a bit of infrastructure in Attica, follow it up with a civilian factory, maybe more, maybe less, eh, just start with the ones. Organize the army, everybody under one general, put him in Athens for now for safekeeping. Alexandros Papagos can be the field marshal, and I like Marcos Dracos, but either one of these generals is fine. They're pretty good generals, actually. That leaves us with the dockyards. We will be building early destroyers. Well, at least one early destroyer and we'll switch out after that. Speaking of ships, let's just group the navy up, put them here in Epirus, give them your one admiral and have them exercise until they have uh, roughly 10 to 15 naval experience. As for the rest of our production, well, we only have the two mills and they're all busy, but working towards the future, let's start queuing up a little bit of stuff. I want support equipment, I want artillery, I want basic infantry equipment, but for now we don't have anything to make these things with so suffer we must and that is the basics done oh no it's not let's just delete the air force they're pointless for now so that is the basics done and we can continue now one note here if you really want to you can start juggling the research slots i've stopped doing it because i keep forgetting <laughs> to check my research slots but yeah you can definitely tech juggle into a couple of these techs earlier but you don't absolutely don't have to so the general strategy will be to deal with italy first yes i know what you're thinking but they're a major power you only have 13 divisions and no manpower how will you ever deal with Italy? <laughs> Just you wait. Now, the overall strategy works fairly well, but this would not be a par... Oh, there you go. The monarchists win the election. But this would not be a paradox game if it didn't include at least some random bullshit. And you will figure that out along the way. I'll let you know where the sore points are. All right, King's government done. Like I said, metaxism all the way down here to recruit the fascists. That is our next stop. All right, we have a fair bit of naval experience. Let's just send the Navy to port, put them in Epirus for now. We're going to go into our production and we'll keep making this early destroyer, but we're going to design a slightly cheaper and better destroyer 1936 hull. Let's put on a light battery. Let's put on a torpedo launcher and no anti-air, but meh, fire control. You don't really need the fire control, but... Eh, might as well save that, put this into production. It's slightly cheaper than the Hydra class and it has slightly more manpower. So it should be a little bit better. No guarantees. I'm not great when it comes to the Navy, but I think this works. Also, we will not have manpower for a long time. Uh, so I won't be able to deploy any of these ships. So what I usually do is just spread out my uh, dockyards between the two. So we never really sit there with a dockyard not doing anything while it cannot deploy the ship. The dockyards would otherwise be wasted. As for the steel trade, you could trade with steel. Uh, you could trade steel with Germany or you could just choose to use that civilian factory on Attica. Doesn't really matter in the long term. Yay, Venezuela dies. Good riddance. This is now a positive event. I like that. All right, so I've got electronic engineering. What I usually do from this point is just make sure I have these bottom slots and then start working on getting some uh, air stuff. We want bombs, we want engines, and we want the uh, interwar small airframe, at least for now. We'll get more stuff later. We don't need any of this stuff just yet, nor do we need any of the artillery stuff just yet. We will be going to war with Albania and Italy soon-ish, 
so in about two years. So as for timings, you have about until about early 1938 to really worry about war. So use that as a, a timer. As for your industry, I recommend this burst every single time, especially considering we'll be changing our production lines quite often. All right, first batch of 100 political power. We will immediately spend it on Alexandros Papagos, the army defense expert. Defense sucks and we'll replace him later. But for now, he's available and he is the easiest source of daily army experience. So we're going to hire him now and he can start pumping out that juicy, juicy army XP. It's so valuable. All right, we have the Hellenic spirit. It gives us more free political power. Going to use that now to get a chief of the air force, the air reformer. I know what you're thinking. Air, bitter steel? You never go air. Yes, in this case, th there is value to the air. We're going to get him in. He's going to start generating us air experience. Once we get 50 air experience, we'll talk again and we'll add, where are we? The industry liaisons. That's about our cue to start researching some air tech. So by that time, we want to start working on the bombs and the engines. And a little bit later down the line, we'll also get the CAS designer. Yes, we'll be getting CAS. And then we'll also get the uh, airframes. But for now, don't worry. Industry is still fine. And onwards and upwards, the National Youth Organization. I'm also going to start work on toad anti-air now. So yes, I am skipping the construction tech for the time being. So I can put some toad anti-air into production. Actually, no. I should probably start working on the air techs now. Yeah. No, 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 no. Toad AA is fine. All in all, your production really doesn't matter that much. The exact order is irrelevant. Just make sure that you start off strong with industry. And then as you build up to the war with Albania and the Italians that you start picking up the required techs for the army. So by the time you're ready to declare war, you want to have researched the better guns, the support weapons one, ideally the artillery and anti-air stuff. And you want to be pumping out your first set of air. So interwar, interwar small airframes with engines and bombs, you want to be starting or at least having about 100 of those produced already. It's very hard to give you exact timelines on this because everybody plays this game a little bit differently. And some of you play it really, really poorly. Air experience. Let's go grab industry liaisons. We can start researching those bombs and stuff. The instant you have 20 army experience, you want to get political loyalty. More stability is always good. It makes everything in your country better. Then we also get the spirit of division command. And I'm going to go with flexible organization. This is very valuable because it makes your troops move faster. Troops that move faster get somewhere before the AI is able to reinforce or move troops into position. This just makes it so much easier to outmaneuver the AI, which is going to give us a massive edge. All right, let's start work on those bombs and engines. All right, we have recruited the fascists. We are now going to head over here, devalue the drachma, utilize our strengths, open foreign subsidized factories, and export more luxury commodities. Then we'll stop and I'll tell you what to do. All right, we have this man here. Xenophon, let's hire him. He'll start getting our fascism support up. So the reason we're going to go all the way down here towards exporting more luxury commodities is because we are waiting for that 40% support for the EESK. This gives us 10%. So we want to take following in the footsteps of giants by the time we have about 30% support for the fascists. So the timings are what they are. It's not ideal, but this is the closest you'll get without really wasting time. All right, almost forgot. We have more political power now. Let's get the aircraft designer, the cast designer, because cast is king. And we go back to hoarding political power for now. And after dispersed and toad anti-air finish, we'll grab the interwar small airframe and the bombs. All right, start work on bombs and interwar small airframes. And we'll also put in a production for the toad AA, assuming we'll ever get any of it done. All right, strengths utilized. Now we are going to start with open foreign subsidized factories. Once you start the focus, just pause the game for a little bit and improve relations with the French the UK, Germany, and the Soviet Union. Why? Well, those four will each give you one civilian factory and one military factory if their opinion of you is higher than 80 when the focus finishes. So, <laughs> three factories, baby. Because I know war is coming about a year, less than a year, I'm going to start work on the artillery, the radio and the infantry stuff. Probably should do this before the radio. Yeah. All right. Knowing what we know, we're going to take 10 units. So just all of your infantry and one mountaineer. Start a naval invasion from the port in Epirus and we'll hit Taranto, Brisindi, Bari and the tile next to Taranto. 
and maybe the Tal up beneath Foggia as well. So we have a good base to strike the uh, Italians from. Then everybody else, so two Mountaineers and a Cavalry Division, just set up on the top three tiles here of Albania with an our attack order. Albania's not really a threat, but uh, you do need some troops to uh, face them. All right, we have our foreign subsidized factories, extra factories, lovely. Now, these three factories on guns, we're going to keep them until we have finished researching our airplanes. Once we have the airplanes, so in 30 days, we're going to start making airplanes and I'll take the factories out of guns, but that's not relevant yet. At this point, it's probably not a bad idea to create a spy agency. It does help when you're invading countries that are substantially larger than yourself, like Italy and possibly the United Kingdom later. So espionage, valuable. Not so much for Italy, but definitely for the UK. So you can see where their fleets are and plan your invasions accordingly. That said, the fleet stuff does take away a lot of your industrial capacity for the time being. All right, interwar small airframe. We are going to be adding bomb locks and more bomb locks. We're not only taking these because they're cheap, but also because they allow us to do naval strike. If we take small bomb bays, which do more cast damage, we will not be able to do naval strikes. So it, it does help deal with the UK and the Italian naval supremacy, at least somewhat, because these are not the world's greatest airplanes, but they are airplanes. They are airplanes. So we'll put two on that and bring our guns back down like this is fine. And we're going to start by converting the airplanes that already have in stockpile. Exporting luxury commodities. Great. And we're going to go down to footsteps of giants and the modern movement. Still sitting on a lot of political power. Don't spend it. We'll need it. As far as your espionage agency goes, you could stop with just the one spy, or if you want more spies or a little bit more usefulness out of it, I recommend the unfortunately named pills, maybe the cryptology department and its techs if you have the safe sort. I usually don't. And then army department, navy department, air force department, all these up here are pretty good picks and maybe anti-partisan for later out. And research civilian trains because I forgot we need trains. We need trains to get somewhere. We only have zero and we can't make any. So I tend to recruit this guy, the British Greek guy. He, he's all right. Uh, slap him here in southern Italy. Start earning his pay. Now, he may get caught. If he gets caught, you're screwed. I mean, there is always an element of RNG to this. I, c I cannot give you a perfect solution. If you're afraid of your spies getting caught, don't recruit any. Don't send any anywhere. It, it is what it is. All right, we have the man liquor gun. And we're just going to focus on getting the infantry equipment up to snuff as well as the artillery stuff. And then probably back to engineering. Uh, sorry, back to industry. And we have the modern movement. This gives us the event, the grand fascist boulet of Halicarnassus. We take the bot option. Metaxas is great, but he gives us the option to form Greater Greece. That's fine. We want more in life. We want George Mercurius will give us the option to fulfill the legacy of the Argiads. This man will allow us to form the empire of Alexander the Great and make Macedonia great again, or Macedon. We are going to grab increasing our mining operations, mobilizing the economy, and then either rejuvenating Athens or making use of our islands. One of the two, I'll, I'll see. It depends. It depends. Allow me to elaborate. Making use of our islands becomes very good if you have the Dodecanese Islands and Cyprus, because it will give you more factories and dockyards. Dockyards, good. More dockyards, more ships, more ships. The higher your likelihood of invading the UK successfully, because there is an element of RNG to it. Rejuvenating Athens is always good. So that's where you're going to have to choose. But more on that later. So we are going to grab increasing our mining operations and mobilize the economy first. We also need to change our chief of the army because Alexander Papagos has decided to leave. So we will hire the army offense specialist. He's better anyway. Next, we have a bunch of political power here. We're going to spend that wisely in the most Greek way possible by illegally defaulting on our debt. I will not be paying any of you. There, debt gone. And the next step to really shake things up, we're going to justify a war goal for the claimed state of Northern Epirus on King Zog. Bye bye, Albania. Now, what is all this going to do? Well, there's another step here, which is to join the uh, Reich, but we can do that at a later date. So just like five or ten days before the justification finishes, just to make sure there are no shenanigans. But what are we going to do here? We're going to have this navy out on naval invasion support in the Adriatic. That is step one. We're going to have this army here 
launching its naval invasions. That's going to be running constantly. Constantly going to have this thing running. And hopefully, when we declare war on Albania and Italy decides to join in completely unprompted, because the Italian AI doesn't know what we're doing, apparently, their fleets will be either busy elsewhere or in port on a mission that doesn't really contribute naval dominance. Even if for just a second, that will allow us to start our naval invasion and then we can tear things up. At the same time, we are also going to call Germany in as our battering ram and they will plunge down from the north here and Italy is pretty much going to be toast. So let's see. And as we're gearing towards war, let's keep building military factories. So I'm going to fill up Attica with mills since it has the most infrastructure. It's going to be building quicker. Then I am building a bit of infrastructure in Epirus because it has the resources and then we'll follow that up with more mills. Well, a mill, not a lot of room to build there. And from this point onward, we are just going to be building military factories. Maybe the occasional railway and naval base in, in time for our campaign against Bulgaria, but not yet. Mining operations increased and we'll now mobilize the economy. This gives us partial mobilization for free. And we're going to spend a little bit of stability just to commandeer some civilian trains. This should give us enough trains to get going. This should tide us over for now. And if you have enough equipment, feel free to add civilian trains to the construction queue or the production queue. All right, economy mobilized. At this point, we can take rejuvenating Athens it would help our buildup. You could hold out for making use of our islands until you have gotten the Dodecanese from Italy. Maybe even Cyprus, though, you're not gonna... No, no, no. Just until you get the Dodecanese. But I think we'll take rejuvenating Athens and then move on. Germany has also eaten Austria, so they have a nice border here with the Italians. We're going to make use of that. And our justification has 70 more days. I'm just gonna ask to join the German faction. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. The Allies won't be guaranteeing these. About 30 days left to the war. So we're going to change this division one more time. Well, a couple more times. We're going to add one artillery battalion. This brings them up to 21 combat with not perfect as shock troops, but more than good enough to deal with the AI. And we should have enough artillery. There we go. And if we have the guns, we might want to add some support artillery. Sorry, some support anti-air, but mm, don't really have enough. But I think we'll replenish the losses in time for this to be worth it. Spirit of the army, state serves the military. One of those things I forgot again. So the moment you switch out into George Mercorus and become fascist, what you want to do is go into your officer corps, spirit of the army, and click state serves the military. This increases your political power gain by 10%. That's a no-brainer. I'm also going to put up our close air support. Two wings of close air support. So everything we can muster is going to be put up. I'm going to put them over the Adriatic on a naval strike and logistics strike just to make sure we actually get a chance to invade Italy. Once we have invaded Italy, I'm transferring them over to Italy itself to provide some actual close air support. Until then, I want them a naval strike along with our navy providing naval invasion support. So we have the highest chance of beating out the Italian Navy. I don't think the Italian Navy is in the area. So with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to sneak by the moment we declare war. If we're not that lucky, well, stuff happens. Can't always win. And with war on the horizon, we're going to hire Napoleon here. Of course, we're going to hire someone named Napoleon. We're now going to open up the country and bolster the Schacht plan. The Navy is deployed in the Adriatic and we will not get naval superiority. We will get it eventually once the Italian Navy gets damaged and returns to port. However, by then we may have lost several of our own ships and there is no guarantee of it actually happening. So at this point, it is a bit of a gamble, I have to admit. But there is nothing for it but to try. We're going to declare war in Albania and we're going to uh, call our allies. This is going to indirectly involve Italy. We're going to call Germany in as our sledgehammer from the north in this division, simply walk around it with the Mountaineer and the Cavalry Division just walks to the victory points and that is Albania sorted. All right, Italy is now also in and we are lucky. You can see the naval invasion is on its way. There were enemy vessels in the area, but not enough. So not the main Italian fleet. As a result, we are able to make this naval invasion happen. So we are now going to destroy Italy with Greece's tiny army of 13 divisions. Should be fun. And the Germans should be walking in from the north. Italy really doesn't stand the chance. And there goes Albania. All right, as these troops start landing, make sure we clean up this area nicely. Take that port, take the other port, and keep 
pushing, pushing, pushing. To the south here, we want to push up to this port. If we can take it, take it. If we can, just set up a defensive line. And in the north here, what we want to do is go for Foggia and start maneuvering your way towards Napoli. We definitely want to have some of the local victory points under our control. And now we have taken a port, sent the rest of the army across as well. It's not much of an army, but it is something. I'm also training up a couple more divisions, but as you can see, don't really have the equipment to deploy them yet, but we are getting things moving. Also, occupy territories. Change this out for the cavalry and switch from military governor, which sounds nice, uh, to local police force. It requires far fewer garrisons. I'm making my main effort to secure Napoli. I have a bunch of victory points in the south now, so I should be good to go. Right, they have troops in Napoli. Maybe I can take the tile above it and encircle it that way. We're very much relying on good maneuver warfare here. All right, first, let's just simply annex Albania. There we go. Confirm and exit. Nothing else to be done there. Our navy, along with the German navy, seems to have found the Italian navy. Our naval invasions have happened. Simply disengage and send our boys back to port. We need these as intact as possible for future operations against the UK. All right, so Italy is bringing up troops to reinforce Napoli. That is unfortunate. Still, nothing, nothing really lost there. Just keep maneuvering. We also have an airport, so I'm going to bring the air force over and start bombing the Italians to bits. And circle and destroy always works. Always works. And with that, we are... <laughs> <laughs> With that, we are in Rome. So, yeah, the Italian AI, really, really not the best. Now, if you're good at this maneuver warfare, you can destroy Italy. However, don't capitulate them. It doesn't matter that much, but if you can avoid it, just don't capitulate them. Let the civil war happen. You'll get a nice puppet whose troops you can use, and that's going to be super valuable, and you don't have to garrison all of the stuff you take. So, I'll just, like, uh, I'm in a good position here. If I can hold the line between Rome and the port... Uh, here, just gonna sit my troops on that front line and wait. You know, I almost feel bad for Italy. They're so bad. Oh, there goes Mussolini. And now we just wait for the actual civil war. It, it does take a bit of time, but we are doing plenty fine here. And with our spy no longer really doing anything, I'm going to switch him over to the UK. They are our next target. want to start spying there. And since we do have a bunch of civilian factories, I'm going to start uh, getting naval department, etc. So I can get two spies in the UK. Get a really good look at where the Navy is by the time we're ready to invade. Not required, but it does help. Italy is shockingly close to capitulation. Now, the reason we don't want Italy to capitulate is because we want to make use of that puppet. That puppet that pops up has a lot of troops. It has a lot of ships. The ships don't really matter. In a perfect world, we'd be able to take all those ships for ourselves. But the troops do matter. They're very, very helpful in taking out, for instance, Bulgaria. While our own army will be deployed in Germany trying to invade the UK, we need those puppet troops to take out Bulgaria. So the Bulgarians don't get any bright ideas like joining the Axis. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to halt my offensives, but I'm afraid the Germans at this point are going to be strong enough to kill off Italy before the civil war can happen. Oh, there we go. The Italian have shattered. The puppet has been created and it is Regno del Sud and they are our puppet. I don't know exactly why, but every time this happens, they are your puppet. Maybe because you are the person initiating the invasion. Honestly, don't know, but at this point we can finish off Italy and it shouldn't be too much more. The Italians are a spent force. They've given it all and lost. Ah, now this is a bit of a pickle. You just saw the event pop up where you transfer all of your occupied territory. You want to click that before the Italians capitulate. Reason being is it makes this whole piece deal a lot cleaner. It is what it is. So we're going to focus on what we want to do. And that is taking as many of these ships as possible. The ships available for you in this piece deal are different every single time. It could be that there's just one heavy cruiser here and nothing. It's also possible that like now you have three battleships available. I don't know. No, wait. Uh, just one battleship available and some cruisers. I don't know what determines this. It feels like pure RNG, but it is what it is. Germany will always transfer the Dodecanese to you because you have a core there. So they will sp spend their points giving this to you, which is great. All right. So occupied Italian. Yeah, I'll transfer the territory. I don't think it does anything anymore. But yeah, we wanted to have clicked that before the peace deal and Hellenic Italy here would have been in control of every everything we would be occupying. So it is what it is. Our fleet is big now. We're going to take the entire army and send them
them over to this port beneath Hamburg and convert everybody into basic infantry now. The Air Force, we follow these guys along as well, and they're going to be sent here. I'll, I'll explain what to do with them later. And that's it. That is the first stage done. And as you can see, we have the Dodecanese Island. So a little bit of manpower, not a single factory, but we have the territory. I'm going to queue up 11 infantry divisions that I want to have deployed by the time things kick off with the UK. But we have time now. We have about a year and we are going to prepare. We're going to heavily militarize. So build as many military factories as possible. And then we'll see. We're also going to request all the troops that this new Italy has. It does come with some downsides, which I'll explain in a bit. We're going to put them on the border with Bulgaria with a nice little attack order. They are our insurance policy. And they come with a bit of an issue. You can see units cannot be disbanded. I can't transfer these troops over because the black shirts and these irregulars are bugged. These are troops that can only be disbanded via decision. And that counts for us. So we cannot disband them. For us, disbanding them is transferring them back to Italy. And we can't do that. I hate this paradox. I really do. All right, we have 112 political power. We are out of manpower. This is the time where we go up to extensive conscription. Could go to service bar requirement after, but I think uh, we'll have a little bit of time. So Greece is constantly starved for population until we do our grand plan of restoring Macedon. So we have to be conservative with our manpower. I'm also going to grab the anti-tank. I'm not going to build anti-tank, but this will allow us to fit the anti-tank cannon to our cast, which is very good. All right, we have both start the Schacht plan. This gives us access to rebuilding the Salamis, one of our old battleships. I'm going to do this, but I'm very unlikely to actually get this built, not with our two dockyards. If you want to, you could build more dockyards or you could have used the focus, make use of our islands. Could have been useful for this. I'm not going to do that. A Greco German ties cemented onwards and let us grab a little bit of infrastructure here and then down into sophistry and science, cooperate with four monopolies and the Academy of Athens. So one, two, three, four, Four. These are the next four focuses. We have more political power. Let us grab Metaxas. Let's go into the uh, officer core here. Switch out trench warfare. Just switch into superior firepower and get us the extra soft attack. Like this is overall a better choice, even for a country like Greece. All right, we finished cooperating with four monopolies, working on the Academy of Athens. Now we have a lot of political power. Let's spend it. We can now hire Siemens, German technological patron. 10% factory output and electronics research speed is a no brainer even if we send more resources to market and we're also going up to a war economy. I am also going to exploit Errata in the Schacht plan. Don't take this until Germany has gobbled up Czechoslovakia. It is unlocked by getting balls to the Schacht plan and if you take it after you cement Greco-German ties you get a different outcome entirely. All right Poland refuses German ultimatum. We're not going to get involved right away. Let Germany ask all at once. We are not getting ourselves involved just yet. Ideally we're going to wait until France falls. Of course we're going to have to see what Germany actually does because the German AI is a bit incompetent and in this case they've taken this northern section so they've got another border with the allies so this this may be um, a bit of a screw up but we'll see. So we're not joining that war just yet. We are however going to go up to uh, a new recruitment law soon. All right after Helena Turkism we get this event. We can either get two applications forms please but no we don't want Turkey in. We're going to sabotage their chances of ever joining the Axis. Bye bye. Who needs the Turks anyway. So yeah, it looks like this is one of those cases where Germany is just really, really bad. They're wasting strength in North Africa. Their stuff is getting raided in the Mediterranean. They've lost their units in Sardinia and they're wasting a bunch of units on the French line. So we'll see if this actually goes anywhere. If not, I'll have to restart. There we go. Poland's done. So Germany may yet survive this. Wonderful. Germany's gone to close the economy. So much for my steel. I guess we'll talk to the Soviets then. All right. We're now going to subjugate the Bulgarians. Two options here. Either you wait. And if Germany is quick about it and they capitulate France really quickly, you can wait until you've defeated the United Kingdom. I have no doubt that Germany is going to fail in that. Uh, they will eventually win, but it will take time and I might need to intervene. So I'm just going to quickly declare war on Bulgaria. We're not going to call our allies in and we're just going to do this. It's possible that Bulgaria now joins the allies. It's possible. If that happens, we'll deal with it and we'll use these troops here to help capitulate the French and the Low Countries and then we'll divert back to the naval invasion. Until that happens, let's just send our fleets to port. Let's send our bombers back over here and help us um, destroy Bulgaria. That is a priority. I understand that it's, it's quite annoying having to rely on the AI to do things for you, but 
eh, it is what it is. As Greasy, you really don't have the power to start punching that much above your weight class, so you have to lean on the Axis AI, which is admittedly not the best AI. And there goes Bulgaria. At least it should. All right, Bulgaria is gone. That took a lot longer than I had planned, but it is what it is. The Italian army that we used for this, we're now going to set to guarding our ports so the UK doesn't cheekily invade behind us. Just guard the ports and we can pretty much forget about the rest. The French are about to fall any day. What? Um, so there's something strange going on with Free France. They should be capping, but they're not. Vichy has formed. All right, never mind. There we go. <laughs> it was just a delayed capitulation. Okay, with that done, a little bit more research, never hurt anyone. We're going to ask the Germans to join the war. We're going to set off our naval invasions so they go instantly. Our navy is in position providing naval invasion support. Now, the air force is out here trying to provide naval strike over the uh, North Sea. And I have infiltrated the UK as much as I can. I can see pretty much everything, almost everything, about their fleets. And, well, it's going to be tight. So they have four task forces on strike force and two task forces on convoy escort here. So we may or may not be able to get in. Oh, I missed it, but we did get a second of superiority somewhere. Our fleets are off. The Navy is here. Set them to naval invasion support so to actually sally forth. The airplanes are in position. Gonna move them up to uh, Amsterdam and then ferry them across as soon as we take a tile. And this is where you just got a micro. The advantage of this is the UK is distracted. They have troops in Denmark still. They have troops in Africa. They are all over the place. They've also tried naval invading us a couple of times. So they are distracted. Now we just have to exploit that by quickly and efficiently overrunning the home islands. Yes, they will guard their ports. That is pretty much given. That is why we are taking a multi-pronged approach to this. So land next to them, move one unit in to take the port and support there. Start walking towards Liverpool while also supporting the attack. We need to take Hull. Shouldn't be too much of an issue, but we are going to need to hurry along here. So the UK is responding, but they are going to be slow enough to allow us to exploit the fact that they are way, way Way out of position here. So we're going to delete all these orders and clean up what we can. Once Hull falls, ferry in the remaining troops here and move the air force in from this airfield. All right, we have taken Hull. Perfect. Assign all units to this order and attack, attack, attack. But 24 divisions, but they should be sufficient to deal with whatever the UK has here. Go around them whenever possible. All right, we're about to reach Liverpool, so we'll effectively have cut the UK in half. Focus on taking airfields. Use whatever strategies you have available to you to delay enemies pushing you back. Do what you can. Also, Germany is going to send help. You really don't want help unless you feel you're not up to it on your own. Uh, what I do is turn off all the allies supply it should discourage Germany from sending help mostly if Germany sends help you will have trouble keeping London encircled while you clean up the rest of the country Germany will take London and and starting that capitulation you want to delay that and we've cut off Cornwall close that as well how's the fleet doing great's not the right word but they're holding they're doing okay and everything is moving at pace to finish that final encirclement of London we're pushing north we're pushing south we're pushing pretty much everywhere so I am in no hurry to finish this. I'm getting more and more war participation up to 14% now. Let's keep building stuff though. Just remembered I should probably be getting trucks. Probably should have had trucks a bit late now. It's, a, yeah, it's still fine. All right, at this point, let's just end it. I'm going to kill off the UK, take London. We have a war goal ready to go on the Italian. Oh, sorry, the Turks. And I could start justifying just to speed things up uh, on the Iraqis, but I don't think I really have to. And so ends World War II with a Greek victory. Perfect. Now, we have to be careful in what we take. We have very specific provinces we need. All of Egypt. So these provinces and the Levant there. That is what we need. Cyprus gets cores. Why not take it? Don't forget about Kuwait. Need that. And then we need all the Pakistani states. That is this one, this one, this one, this one, that one. I think those are Oh, and that one. I think those are... No, not that one. I think those are all the Pakistani states. These are required to form Macedonia. So this is what we will take and what we will put all our points towards if it comes to that. And of course, Germany is going to fight me over it. Fine, I'm willing to spend my points on that. Germany is being really persistent here. Germany, please give me what I want. I earned it. Germany isn't letting this go, is it? No? Please, Germany, stop. 
Stop. Stop doing this. Wow, that took 15 turns. That said, we do have everything we need now. We still have some points left over, so everything is going to be very, very expensive now. But we could just start puppeting stuff that we would like. Oh, well, we have the provinces we wanted. I also took the entire Royal Navy because I've earned it. Let's end things here. I forgot to get my troops into position. But yes, we're now going to declare war on Turkey. Oh, I am an idiot. I am such an idiot idiot look at that look at the disgusting mess we've made all right but the actual troops are arriving next up afghanistan should be able to push them back now word of advice if you want to do this wait for your army to actually be in position before you declare war and you won't have this and i forgot to declare my wars wow i'm real stupid today but they'll pay they'll pay nonetheless i should be able to push past here relatively easily now sorry for that boys i'm sorry sometimes i'm just stupid anyway at this point our army should have no problem rolling all the way into afghanistan germany is also involved here but we should have the majority of the participation all right so i've managed to knock everybody but ethiopia out and i didn't ever expect Ethiopia to be a real problem. I actually feared Germany would overrun them and get a disproportionate amount of the war score. Yet yeah, here we are. Anyway, while all that's going on, quickly going to build up an actual railway network because I will need to push into the Soviet Union at some point. And I'd like to have all these networks connected so there is at least some supply flowing to our armies. Ethiopia on the way out. I am going to justify a war goal on the French. And there we go. Now we take what we want and what we need. Fortunately, Germany doesn't have all that many points, so I can pretty much take what I occupy. We need all of Turkey, all of Bulgaria, all of Iran, 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 and all of Afghanistan. Also Iraq. Like I said, we have the majority of the points here, so I don't expect this to be a problem. There we go. We have everything we need here. Now to get boys into position to take Syria from the French, and we'll move other boys into position to strike at the heartland of the French. Not gonna call the Germans in, mostly because I don't need to. Quickly over on Syria here. French shouldn't join the common turn. There aren't any factions left, so they shouldn't really do anything but die, but you never know. Arts of Iron 4 AI is weird like that. And that is Syria under control. Now, I could just naval invade Vichy France and just deal with it that way, or I could just set up on uh, taking out the Soviets. I'm going to justify on the Soviets, but I'm not ready to invade yet, mostly because I need to expand this local railway network extensively. All right, let's invade the French. Should not be insurmountable. Could be a bit of a challenge, but I think we'll be able to deal with it. Ah, uh, another Napoleon conquering France. Love to see it. My cast is just melting these units. Love Cass. Cass is king. I just wish it wasn't so hard getting naval superiority, but this time it doesn't matter because everybody we're going to fight isn't going to be able to match the German air force. But to get to this point, it, it takes a bit of time. And all that while, you really don't have much of a navy to work with. All right, now just the final African holding and we'll be done here. Once we finish this job, we are getting ourselves committed to the war with the Soviets. And there goes Vichy France. All we really need here is Syria. Well, we have Vichy France, our puppet, and Hellenic France, also our puppet. You know what? Not even going to question it. Not even going to question it. It is what it is. Fine, fine, fine. All right, let's just set up our entire army on the Soviet border here. We need these three provinces. So Pamir, Stalinabad, and... Pamir, Stalinabad, and... Which one is it? Ah, Tashkent. So we're just going to ferry the entire army this way. Meanwhile, I have been building up the supply network in the region. So maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to support all those units. The navy's done. They can go back to port. And they are quite big. The Greek navy is finally a navy to be proud of now. Well, units are in position. Might as well join this war. There we go. And now we just need to take the final provinces from the Soviets. Fun fact, I overlooked a small detail. And you might want to do this before you declare war on the Soviet Union. I forgot Yugoslavia as a thing. So you need... Macedonia, Southern Serbia, and Montenegro. I probably should have done that before 
for eating the Soviet Union and committing my entire army here. I'm just gonna grab control of the areas we need here and then just set up for defensive operations while I divert half my army. All right, so I've pushed up to the territories I need here. Pamir, Tashkent, and Stalinabad. I control those, so let's check. Yep, all I need is the Bulgarian, Albanian states, as well as Yugoslav states south of Serbia. Those being Macedonia, Southern Serbia, and Montenegro. Again, I should have done this way, way sooner, but I am an unmitigated idiot, so I didn't. We'll now simply declare war. We're not going to call our allies in. I don't need this peace deal to be any more complicated than it's going to be, and now we'll just overrun them. And naturally, they join the common turn, as one would expect. That's okay. Et voila! We control the required territories, and now we can honor the legacy of the Argeats. We are the Macedonian Empire. Look at that. 7.9 million manpower on... Well, I am on service by requirement. I could probably bump that down to extensive conscription. 77 civilian factories. Not a huge amount, but respectable. And 71 military factories. I'd say this is a respectable amount of factories. So with that, we have achieved our goals. The Soviet Union and the rest of the Comintern will fall. There's nothing they can do to stop us now. And then we are in a perfect position to strike... Germany and the Axis. We are the dominant force on Earth, right? Well, Germany is, but we are in a perfect position to become that dominant force, especially considering we've barely lost any men and the Germans have bled themselves dry. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, even with my mistakes, and I hope you'll enjoy this next video too. I can't promise there won't be any mistakes there either. See ya!